Oh, General, the little lady just pulled in the port. Well, it's about time. It's under work party to unload her. <laughs> Sir, she's not carrying that four tons of gunpowder you ordered. We've got a firm promise on that. Wire Cincinnati, I want to know exactly what went wrong. Yes, sir. A man named Trenner Park in your office, sir. Park? I'll see. Sir, there's been another message from General Lyon. He's calling for reinforcements. Where is he now? Southwest of here, about 100 miles beyond the last railhead at Rolla. Beyond Rolla? What's he doing there? He was advised to pull back if he felt threatened. What's the situation, you know? Uh, he has 6,000 men, but he's fighting the Missouri rebels and McCullough's army. Arkansas. What's their strength? They outnumber him two to one, sir. What the hell's wrong with him? Order him to pull back to Rolla at once. General Lyons is not the type of man who's going to like to re retreat, sir. You make that order firm and unconditional and tell him if he if he fights, it's entirely on his own responsibility. Got your hands full, huh, Charles? Trainer, you're a long way from California. Oh, got a bit of trouble back on the Mariposa, Colonel. <laughs> General, <laughs> Excuse me. Trouble? What you might call a real crisis, in fact. To put it plain, you're overextended. Uh, like your General Lyon. You borrowed too much, Charles. Your gold production is down, and it's falling further behind every month. Uh, your notes are coming due, and with the wartime credit squeeze, it's going to be hard to renew them. Any other good news? Well, your new machinery is ready. But the manufacturers demand the immediate payment in cash. If you don't come up with some money right away, they're going to let that machinery go to another company. Like hell, they will. They'll out sue. Well, in the middle of a war? How long will that take? What will happen to Mariposa, meanwhile? Trenner, I gave you and your people three-eighths of the Mariposa to take care of such problems. Now, take care of them. We bailed you out, Charles, and you know it. And that damn went floodgates and all. General Lyon is in receipt of your message, sir. Good. Keep me informed. Yes, sir. General, why don't you give up this military foolishness and come back and tend to business? Foolishness? Senator, I'm in command of the Western Department. I was appointed by the president himself. Our whole country is tearing itself apart, and you call it foolishness? Maybe you should have told the president your uh, fancy gold mine's about to go under. You ever stop to figure how much time you really give to that place? The only thing that will save you now, Charles, are long-term bonds. Sir? I've already... General Lyon has engaged the enemy, sir, near Wilson's Creek. He's been attacked? No, sir, he attacked. What? Did he receive my order to retire? Yes, sir. Then why? We're coming in, sir. Get it! Trenner, do what has to be done. I'm busy here. I've already lined up the best man in New York, George Opdyke, the former mayor. Hmm? And a prominent speculator and financier. Fine. Yeah. He and Murray Ketchum are willing to put together a combine to sell Mariposa bonds. And they'll guarantee him, in fact. What do they want for return? For a fee, of course, uh, just to cover expenses and a say in the operation. What do you mean, ownership? A quarter of interest. General? General Lyon is in full retreat, sir. Is Lyman reporting himself? No, sir. The telegrapher from Springfield is reporting on his own, sir. Put all troops on immediate alert. All of them. Trained or not. Instruct Oberry to issue all weapons. Three days cook rations to each man. Ready to train. We're moving straight on to Rolla. Yes, sir. And get those sappers ready. I want every trestle between here and Rolla rigged for demolition on an hour's notice. They're not moving into St. Louis on our railroad. Yes, sir. Tell Lyon. To order his forces and try to go on the defensive at, uh, at Rocky Run, just east of Springfield. Send it now. Benner, do me a favor. Get out of here. What about the barn? I'm an owner, too, you know. Maybe you didn't understand me, Charles. The Mariposa is in serious trouble. If we don't do something... I've got serious trouble here, damn it. Trenner, just take care of it. Do whatever you think is best. Colonel Jeter. Sir. I want all battalion and regimental commanders to report to me at once. Yes, sir. Sir? General what? Fremont, sir. What? Line is dead, sir. His command is under full route. And the Confederate Army is 20 minutes outside of Springfield, sir.
street, sir. Yes, I did. I surely did. Mr. Prince, General Fremont asked me to deliver this letter. why he has so much trouble understanding that simple fact. He is dealing with Missouri, Mr. President, under a pardon condition. I hope General Fremont will have taken an appeal by now. It's been almost eight weeks since the Senate was out there. General Lyon was a great loss. It was a great loss. So my husband is rebuilding now. It was virtually shattered after the engagement at Wilson's Creek. Mr. President, Charles wants to be quite sure that you are receiving a true, a comprehensive picture of Western affairs. That is why he asked me to come see you personally. How could it be more comprehensive? I hear from him almost daily, always to the effect that he wants more support. Yes, sir. He does need. He seems unaware that there are any theaters of war but his own. He quite understands that, sir. That what I support him to the extent I can. The armies of the Potomac and the Cumberland must have priority. The capital must remain secure. Yes, sir. But the general... Anyway, his problems aren't just men and arms. His excesses are martial law. Sir, the secessionists were doing all in their power to drive loyal Union supporters out of the state. After Lyon's defeat... And this proclamation of his... It was nasty. The general should never have dragged the Negro into this war. This isn't a war against slavery. It's a war to preserve the Union of the United States. Surely the war must be against slavery. Slavery is the root issue. The single rock upon which everything has split apart. Do you think that I don't know that? How dare you so presume? I detest slavery. I abhor it. I know it's the cause of this conflict. And yes, madam, if the South continues to resist, it may well be right and politic to declare all slaves free. But not now. Now the issues are separate, and I intend to keep them that way. I intend to preserve this union. Why wouldn't General Fremont withdraw the proclamation when I asked him to? Because it would have destroyed the department's authority, sir. And sir, if you forgive my saying so. Because asking for its withdrawal was a mistake. A mistake, madam? Yes, sir. Well, mistake or not, madam, and I must say, that's not for you to judge. It was a decision, a presidential decision. And I pass that decision on to your husband in the form of a civil request. Please withdraw the order on your, your own authority. Those are my words to him. Why did he refuse? Because? Because his eye was cocked on the crowd. The reaction of the crowd. That is not true. And it, will you stand there and tell me, madam, that the rapturous praise of Horace Greeley and all the other radicals had nothing to do with your husband's refusal to honor a presidential request? Why, sir, nothing, whatever. Mr. President, please, don't you see? Charles has conf uh, General Fremont has confronted the slavery issue head on. By refusing to do the same thing, you are only making the Union vulnerable. In fact, sir, you're making yourself vulnerable. Now we come to it. You speak of vulnerability. Might General Fremont be just the man to take advantage of that vulnerability? I'm sorry, sir. I don't understand.
Your husband came within a hair's breadth of this office not too long ago, madam. Is his present stand designed to achieve, if I must be blunt, what he could not achieve when he ran for this office? I can't believe you mean that. I have General Fremont's view, madam, which I will answer in due course. Have you said all you care to say? I wish only to say that my husband would never, ever stoop to political manipulation. His honor would forbid it. And sir, he deserves your support. I have said, madam, that I will answer you in due time. Good evening. in two columns. I'll lead one, you lead the other. Yes, sir. Reveille at midnight, march at one. In position before dawn and attack at first light. I'll uh, initiate. You'll engage only after you hear gunfire. Yes. I want a close personal inspection before we march. General! They've gone. What? Get out of there. The whole kit and caboodle of them. I rode right into the camp. Not a soul there. Fire's all cold. The locals say they've headed for Pineville. Damn it. But we can still bag them, sir. They couldn't be more than a day's march from here. Ready your men for a forced march. Three days cook rations. Have your officers inspect each man's cartridge box individually. We'll break camp at sunset. Reardon, you think we'll find them? No question, sir. The troops are raring to go. The roads are in good shape. We'll make a good time, sir. Good. Better see about your men, then. Yes, sir. Sorry, General. At ease, soldier. You all ready for him? Yes, sir. Scared, sir? No, sir. I guess a little bit, sir. Everybody's a little bit scared. You won't be alone. Just do what the others do. You'll be fine. Yes, sir. General? Are you scared? Yes, I am. But I know I've got a lot of good men behind me. And I know what has to be done, so... When the time comes, I'll be all right. So will you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. General Fremont? Yes. Colonel Atten, sir. I have a War Department field order, sir. From the President himself. Take care of that.
Major General David Hunter. This authorizes me to assume command of the Army of the West. Clear away these men, Colonel. All right, man, back to what you were doing. Move it. Move it now! It says, General, correct me if I'm wrong, that the order does not stand if my forces are in the immediate presence of the enemy. I believe that's the language, yes. Well, the enemy, sir, is... The enemy has fled. Is that not so? Well, yes, sir, but they're only a day's march away. I've already given orders. One day's march does not constitute immediate presence. Do you have any brandy? It's been a long ride. Yes, sir. Come in. Your army looks like rabble, General. You wouldn't want to fight them, sir. They're well trained, ready to march. Now, Price is headed for Pineville. You can easily catch him. I do not intend to pursue Price. But you don't intend it. You heard me correctly. I do not. May I ask why, sir? The enemy is near and vulnerable. Victory seems almost certain. If Price will not stand in fight, he no longer represents a threat to the Union. General, I can't believe the President would count this. Terminating the only active campaign being carried on by any Union army. Pursuing Price would be a wild goose chase. Are these the President's feelings, or are they... The President left that decision up to me. I will not pursue Price. You are relieved, General. You're making a mistake. In which case, as commanding officer, I assume full responsibility for it. You are relieved, General. Yes, sir. I'll return to St. Louis. As you wish. Please summon your district officers and senior staff. I'd like to talk to you. You're in command now, sir. I suggest you summon them yourself. Sergeant Brayton. Sir. Get my horse ready and pack my gear. Yes, what? sir. Is it true, sir? I've been relieved of command. Relieved? What? Please, is that what he said? You're sending them back? I signed to fight under you, Jen. I ain't gonna fight under nobody else. You're the one taught us all we know. Yes, right. sir. Then please. Who do these Washington know nothings think they are? I yeah. ain't soldiering any peace or any armed chance. We followed this part, General. We ain't following nobody else. I don't fight for nobody else. Me neither. I'm going home. Right. 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 Then! Right. 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 It's a soldier's duty to obey orders, even the ones he doesn't like. You all know that. Now, you joined the Army to fight for the Union. Not for me but for the Union. So if you want to help me... You know we do, Yes, yes sir. sir. We do. If you want to help me, and prove to your new commander that he is in charge of the best damn fighting force in the United States. Prove that to him. Do that for me, man. And I'll be eternally grateful. God bless you. Every one of you. 